Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Doe Show for Monday, March 26th, 2018. I'm Ferris Fair. And I'm Bambi Dextrous. And we have another packed, huge show for you today, because we saw a lot of drag this weekend. It was such a busy weekend, and it kicked off on Friday in a huge way with the second Edmonton preliminary for our, the search for Alberta's next drag superstar. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a fantastic show, and everybody totally brought out their A-game, and... Uh, yeah, it was just a, a wonderful night of drag. Um, the uh, the one number that really blew me away and uh, one of the contestants that did go through uh, was Ivy League. Uh, she did a, a new parody that she had written uh, and had a friend sing, uh, I am a fucking whore. Like it was just, it was amazing. Uh, she had backup dancers, the, the, the glove pussy. Oh my god, like, the glove was, pussy. It was so good. So congratulations girl on getting through. It was totally deserved. It was, it was a fabulous number. Mm. Another person that went through, very deservedly so, Pheromone Kills. Mm -hmm. And Pheromone was very interesting to watch because she pulled out some dance moves that we'd never seen from her before. Those splits, girl! <laughs> we have this Mystery Queen of the Night. Mm -hmm. And Mystery Queen ended up being Go Go Fetch. Go Go! Why don't you talk about Go Go? Oh, I love the Go Go. And it was, you know, I was so sad when she wasn't going to be in it this year and so uh, to have her be the one in the reveal was 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 wonderful to see so uh, also she made it through so congratulations to the go-go for, for making it through Yay. Um, fourth and fifth place of the night was um, uh, Loris the Mary Virgin and and Gigi uh, they did a lip sync for your life they battled it out uh, Loris was a rock god uh, and it was just it was tremendous so uh, congratulations Loris um, on making it through. So that was the four from the second preliminary that made it through. But that's not all. Because in the back room there were secret meetings going on. Bambi, why don't you tell us about that? Okay, so there's been twists and turns this year and ants everywhere you look. And in the back room there was a secret meeting of eliminated queens and queens still in the competition and all of us voted for a wild card spot. Mm -hmm. So we all were given ballots, sheets of paper, we wrote down a name and selected a wild card. It ended up being a tie, a tie between Gigi, Sapphire, and Rexy. The revote ended up being uh, Rexy and Sapphire. Uh, of another tie? Yeah, so we just allowed both of them to go through. Uh, the more the merrier. So that's amazing. So uh, that's actually six from that one and four from the other. So five and five. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a packed semifinals with, with ten Edmonton Queens. So uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. So I can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Friday was fabulous. And what a way to kick off the weekend, as I said. Uh, Saturday was crazy busy in Edmonton. Um, starting off in the afternoon at the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, uh, the Dragon Youth Series with Lay Away decided to put on a drag queen rummage sale. And uh, a bunch of queens came and sold their stuff, and a bunch of people came and bought some stuff, and there was trades and goods, and everybody went home happy, and it was wonderful. Uh, I think some money was raised for some charities, and it was good. Um, after that, we stuck around for the Dragon Youth Series Dragon Easter, mm. a, um, an East, a, a church lady extravaganza, that's what it was called, hosted by uh, Lady Tenderflake and the church lady herself, Lola Lamour. Um, it was a fun show, uh, packed with, with, with kids. Uh, mm -hmm. There honestly was only a few adult performers. The, okay. uh, it, was, right. it was full of youth. Um, there were some debuts. There was... Um, it was a really stellar show. It was, it was fantastic. And um, Jordan King really stood out for me yet again. Um, he's just so solid in what he does and he'll be stepping down as an amateur king fairly soon. And um, yeah, I can't wait till he actually gets old enough that he can be yeah, performing some of these other competitions and stuff because he's just so good at what he does. Um, the other big event, at least I felt for this, uh, for this Dragon Youth show was uh, the retirement of one of the co-founders of the Dragon Youth series, um, KPK Carr, um, due to her one wheel basically given out, uh, she's not going to be able to perform anymore. So uh, Dragging Your Heels was honored to be at, at her last show and, and capture her final performances and they, along with the other videos from the entire weekend, 
are already up on the channel. So uh, when you get a chance, check out KPK, uh, KPK Cars Final Performance. Uh, Kim, we're going to miss you. Uh, we'll be great to see you out at events and stuff, but it won't be the same without having you on the stage. Um, that was what I got to do on Saturday. But um, dragging our heels was all over the place on Saturday. We were actually at two other events with our other videographers. Why don't you talk about what else went on on Saturday? Right. At Evolution Wonder Lounge, the ISCWR had their halftime show hosted by Vanity Fair and Big Daddy. And um, probably one of my favorite numbers of the night was Divina Die For. Uh, emotions. I mean, <laughs> to set it up, like, Davina had this table on stage and then she pulled out a Subway sandwich and was sitting there eating, lip syncing, eating, eating, and getting money, getting tips for it. Yeah, nobody, nobody collects tips while sitting and eating her lunch on stage, like our drag superstar <laughs> Davina <laughs> died for. Uh, it was fantastic, girl. It was such a good number. Uh, but yeah, it looked like it was a great show. The videos looked like everybody was having fun and talking to Braden. He had a great time. So, uh, ISCWR, congratulations on another successful event and thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. uh, what else was going on on Saturday? Um, also, across town, there was the Hail Mary and Have Mercy. Right. Our videographer Sky was there to film mm -hmm. that event. And um, it's a very interesting, unique venue because there's not really a stage, so you just wander around the tables and dance and mm -hmm. perform to the individual tables. So our videographer Sky, she's following our drag queens around. Um, Andrew Ginny yelled at some woman's vagina. <laughs> Sky loved that. Um, um, I also just wanted to shout out to Andrew on, on, on that night too. Uh, she also did another performance, uh, Level, Level Up, up Yap Posse. Level Up Yap Posse. <laughs> uh, I just, the look, the wig, the, it was wonderful. I just oh, yeah. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. Um, the other shout out from those videos that I caught was um, Carried Away did, did Black Velvet, and I, I'm such an Alana Miles fan, so that was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. And complete side note, I was at 7-Eleven yesterday, and I saw this real girl who looked identical to Carried Away. <laughs> it was really crazy. I was just kind of like, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that was, was Saturday. Saturday. On Sunday, we got to do something that we don't get to do nearly enough. Uh, we got to drag our heels down to Calgary and catch a show at Twisted Element. And we had such a great time. Um, we were there for a special occasion. It was the Calgary semifinals in the search for Alberta's next drag superstar. Yes. So we got to bookend our weekend with ANDS, or A-N-D-S, as they all call it down <laughs> in Calgary. Yeah. Which is so weird. We call it ANDS girls. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it was it was a fantastic show, and as I said online, uh, Edmonton better step their pussies up because like <laughs> Calgary is coming for that crown this yeah. year. They are taking no excuses. So um, Calgary is thirsty for the crown. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, the highlight of the night, as far as I'm concerned, is is my is my guy Duke Carson. I was crushed when he didn't uh. make it through last year, and Chelsea and I were whining the whole way home. Justice for Duke. So I was so happy when, when Duke Carson made it through. Uh, it, just a phenomenal number. And uh, yeah, I honestly think if that number had been the, at the finale, that would have been the winner. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but that was, it was that good. Anyway, check it out online. Uh, what was one of your favorites? What else was going on there that you really enjoyed? Ah, Electrocute. She came out as Jessie from Pokemon and did a Pokemon Go based number mm -hmm. with Pokemon Ho! Pokemon Ho! <laughs> and no, it was really awesome to see that characterization yep. and it was really good to see um, how well she thought out everything. Yep. Everything was planned out. Yeah, it was a very and well then, thought out number for sure. And then the big reveal towards the end, of course, is Jordan in the gigantic Pikachu costume. Totes adorbs. Toast adorbs. <laughs> it was just the cherry on top to a really great performance. So yeah. congratulations, Electra. Yes, and she was the other one that was. It was it was Duke and Electra that were the two oh, yeah. that were uh, voted through by the judges. So congratulations to both of them. They will both be oh, in yeah. the finale. 
Uh, um, speaking of the finale, the finale. <laughs> uh, this is another one that made it to mm -hmm. correct. Um, Stephanie Prince so returns to the to the end finale because she was in it last year too. Oh, so, uh, but yeah, yeah Stephanie yeah. was great. Stephanie was really great. What can I say about her? Uh, the uh, the light comes on and she's just standing there without moving, and like the crowd just erupts because she just <sighs> looked. Unbelievable. Just the reveal of her standing there made the crowd gasp. So yes. if that's any indication of what she's got coming, oh, yeah. Uh, the other one that blew me away, and I was so happy when they were chosen as a wild card, uh, because it means we're going to get to see another performance, was Moby Dick. Yeah. I am telling you, the Kings brought it in I Calgary. I was going to say. It was so good. Uh, like, if it was a Kings versus Queens, to me, I think I would have put it in yeah. the Kings' pocket. It really was a, a tremendous night. Uh, Lilith said it, and I completely agree with her. Moby Dick is probably the best Dry King makeup I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, it's just incredible like it, it was it was so good uh, and the reveals and the moves and congratulations mm -hmm. Moby on being chosen I was I was so happy oh when God. that was announced um, uh, one more that I want to do a shout out I was sitting beside um, Raul from uh, Big Brother Canada and he Visa Decline came out and did a Selena montage number and mm. and Raul was just like standing up and just like he was just he was standing in, up oh he was just shouting. in heaven so he uh, I have to believe he knew what he was talking about so I have to give you full credit that it was obviously believable because yeah. he was certainly <laughs> believing it so uh, congratulations Visa that was a that was a tremendous number and I'm sorry that we didn't uh, you didn't make it through but uh, for a last minute addition from what I heard uh, tremendous number so totally. so congratulations uh, yeah. there was one more number that we have to talk we have about, to talk about. <laughs> oh my goodness uh, penny so tense may have done something bad yeah. <laughs> uh, she slaughtered the competition <laughs> yes well she sure took a stab at it anyway yeah. she took a swing at the competition <laughs> Oh. And she has high hopes for Anne's, but they may have gone up in flame. Oh, Penny. <laughs> uh, it was such a good number. Like, I mean, she looks fabulous. Yeah. And, and, and the props. And the prop, props to the props. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a fun number, but she used a real knife and she kind of like threw it down and it kind of like bounced across and like it kind of like, well, yeah. it, did. Um, it did. It did happen to hit someone <laughs> that we know in the front row. Um, I hope it was the the, yeah. the butt end because he just kind of like reacted and like picked up this knife that was thrown at him. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it was a fabulous number. So congratulations, Penny. Yeah. Like it was, it was so Penny. <laughs> Check out Penny's video. Yes. I did something bad. <laughs> Absolutely. So while we were in Calgary, we had Sky and Brayden in Edmonton filming the Sunday Review. Uh, yeah, it was called Glamazons, mm -hmm. uh, and it was hosted by Fair Kills. Kills. Um, I took a look at her videos, and like, she, she looked amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brayden and Sky had a really good time, I know that. Um, the other big standout for me, and I was crushed that I couldn't be there, was Roselle Christina performed. Um, and like, the numbers that I saw, that was right back to classic Roselle, like that reveal, and like, oh girl. You're so fabulous. Um, but yes, so Roselle uh, yeah. and, and Fairmont, good job. That's, that's, that's tremendous. Um, Melinda. Mm-hmm. Melinda with her number Working Girl. Both of the numbers were, were tremendous, but Working yeah. Girl was working it. It, it, like, was it was a step above. It was, it was tremendous. Honest. Yeah, it was the energy. Like, I felt it. <laughs> From <Yeah>. Calgary. <laughs> yeah, it was tremendous. Um, and... Last but certainly not least was the debut of our dear friend, uh, Lesbianist. Uh, and yeah, uh, you and I were talking about it and, and you were saying, you know, you, you messed up or whatever. And I was just like, so what? We all do. Uh, you did great. Uh, you did fabulous and you were obviously having a good time and so was the audience and that is all that matters. Uh, so congratulations. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the fam. <laughs> 
Uh, we're gonna do something that we started to do at the end of last week's episode where Bambi and I kind of picked our favorite of the week. Uh, we, uh, because everybody was out and about this weekend filming all over, we thought everybody should have a pick. So, uh, we're gonna start this week with Sky's pick of the week, and it was from last, our Sunday night Sunday, Sunday review, um, with, from Pheromone Kills with the Duck Duck Goose. And yeah, it was a, a really good number. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tremendous, so... Congratulations, Pheromone, on Sky's Pick of the Week. And we have Brayden's Pick of the Week, which is Melinda Virga, Working Girl. It was tremendous. As I, it, was, it was almost mine, too. So, yeah. uh, fabulous job. Uh, my pick, probably not too much of a surprise. Uh, my boy, Duke Carson. Um, yeah, he's I even know age. exactly where he is. He's right there. Duke! Duke! <laughs> <laughs> Duke looks like a lady. Man, just fabulous. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And then my pick of the week was Moby Dick. Um, Filthy. Oh, and so good. I didn't even really enjoy that song at first, but then I watched Moby Dick perform it. I now enjoy that song a lot more than I did. So that just shows how a good number can really change your perspective of a song. Exactly. That was last week. And this is this week. <laughs> Coming up on Thursday, uh, as always, Evolution Wonder Lounge is having their drag race viewing party, so you can head down there and watch it with everyone at 6 o'clock. It is an amazing time if you uh, haven't done it. It's so much fun, so uh, definitely try to check out that. Um, later on that evening at the uh, University of Alberta, Outreach is putting on their annual show. Um, it is uh, $10 in advance, $15 at the door. Uh, with performances from Twiggy, Cat, Ruby, and there's also a competition for amateur drag queens that night as well. And I can tell you from past experience, last year at Outreach, that was when we fell in love with Vula Callis. That was where we saw her debut. So we could meet our new Vula Callis on Thursday. Yeah, we know this year's Vula Callis. The winner Maybe. of last year was Pariah, who was also amazing. Mm -hmm. And that was also, I believe, the debut of Bitch But Wet Pussy, who went on to win... Um, some review royales and a few other things. So, uh, yeah, like who knows what's going to be happening. We could so, have a new crop of superstars exactly. born on this night. Exactly. So, uh, if you don't have anything to do on Thursday and you want to see some good amateur drag, head down to the University of Alberta. If you want to see some professional drag on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> The House of Homicidal is presenting Death Becomes Her at Metro Cinema. Mm -hmm. There you can see Lord is the Merry Virgin, Goblin Dix, Eden Out, mm -hmm. and that is at 9.30, and the uh, entry fee to get in is $13. That brings us to Saturday. Evo presents Angina. Now, we're not sure who's opening for Angina. Yeah, I, I don't really know, honestly, a whole lot about this event. Um, it was supposed to be somebody else, um, and it's now on Gina, and I couldn't be more <laughs> thrilled. Uh, she was one of my favorites from one of, from, was it season one she was on? Like, oh, like, I'm so happy to finally get to meet her. Like, yeah, I, if you oh. want to meet and greet her, it's a $15 ticket and $8 for general admission, I believe. Which is a tremendous, like... Angina for eight bucks? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, totally. So, yeah, no, uh, please. <laughs> I, I will be there on Saturday. I won't be watching while I'm actually working security, but uh, come see us on Saturday. It's going to be a fantastic night. Uh, also, go to Evolution on Sunday for the weekly Sunday review. Uh, this week it's hosted by JBR. It's called April Fools. Um, we have no idea who's in it or what's going on or what the theme is or... But we do know it's a JBR it's show. It's JBR. Like, how bad is it going to be? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a tremendous show. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out together what tricks JBR has in her basket. Uh, if you are watching this somewhere other than Edmonton, comment in the thing below because we're totally curious as to what the drag scene's like where you are as well. Um... Thanks for watching. Uh, and we're going to have a link to our favorite videos here in these corners. Somewhere. And yay. <laughs> I'm Bambi Dextrous. I'm Ferris Fair. And this is Drake Your Heels Do Show. Bye. Bye. If you are watching this somewhere other than Edmonton. Oh. Oh. No, because we're going to. We have to cut that out because the telephone's ringing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably Brayden. I'd laugh so hard if that was Brayden right now. <laughs>